Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Two Guys on Beer. I'm Johnny Bellata and Dave Monterana, of course. Come on, we're always here, we're always at National Mechanics doing our thing, you know. So today, um, a couple of beers we haven't ever even touched. And one is uh, the Flying Dogs Imperial Espresso. I've touched it. Wow, okay. Dave has touched that, okay. Uh, the Flying Dog Imperial Espresso Porter uh, from Flying Dog in Cherry Hill, New Jersey with local here to us in Philadelphia. And then a uh, the Browery uh, Hoidke, uh, who does Lyrium, uh, Delirium line, uh, has the Fruly uh, Strawberry Beer, which is low ABV, but they say it's high in, you know. You know we love our fruit, fruit characters. Beers. So we gotta try a fruit beer. We gotta keep trying them until we find one that we're actually like, yes, it's a delicious root beer. Which one do you wanna do first, Dave? Strawberry beer. Strawberry beer. Okay. Strawberry beer. Why not? By the Browery... Hoike? Hoike. You know what? I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I emailed my buddy Ben Kessler. He sent back what was a phonetic spelling and still I'm a little confused. Um, okay, so the, the the brewery itself has existed there since mid-1600s. It was it was purchased by um, Mr. Huya. Quaker. Quaker. <laughs> it was, it was um, bought by him in and around the year 1902. This is 4.1% alcohol by volume. This is uh, this is a fruit beer. Fruit beers are relatively traditionally. I mean, everything is muted for the purpose of allowing the fruit to dominate. Yep. So it's low hop, it's low malt, it's um, usually high in sugars, but those are natural, and they tend to suck. <laughs> they do, they, they really do. I mean, we, we don't really like to say that about no. you know beers, but it does. I mean, an exception might be like some fruitier lambics like Lindman's, which I know a lot of people like, yeah. love. Well, they're, they're done right. I mean, they're done right. Well, right, they taste decent. Now, I mean, you, if you've watched the episode that we did from the World Cafe, uh, their Belgian Beer Fest, you'll know that we tried at least three fruit beers yep. and finally found one that we actually halfway liked. Castile Rouge. And the only reason for it was that it was 90% champagne. It was made with champagne yeasts, and it, yep. was, it was clarified the same as champagne, and so that probably had a lot to do with it. Anyway, let's get into it, because why the hell not? Made by the makers of Delirium, of the Delirium line, Delirium Tremens, Delirium Nocturnum, etc., along with about 50 other kinds of beer, and so you know, I hope for this one, maybe that'll win some uh, credence, yeah. right? The, the scent of this is a very, it's a, it's a very, like, strawberry cola type uh, yeah, man. scent. I mean, it's very prominent. The strawberries, are like the candy. berries coming through. Yeah, it smells um, like uh, what are those old uh, like the taffies, the real chewy taffies. Laffy taffies, like laffy taffy or um, the like square taffy. ones. Starburst. Starburst. Smells like yeah. a strawberry it does Starburst. Smell like a, and it, yeah, it does. It has a, a little bit of a champagne quality to the bit, to the yeah. scent too, but um, no lacing on the glass. It is an unfiltered beer, so it is uh, it is very cloudy. And now uh, let's see how great this uh, unfiltered fruity goodness is supposed to be. I don't hate it. No, I don't hate it. It tastes like it tastes like a carbonated. It tastes like a strawberry um, starburst. It does. It tastes like something that you would get on a Sunday morning at brunch and it's like the champagne special yeah a Sunday morning at brunch but not bad I don't think I could drink a ton of these you know what's interesting is you say that this would make a, a great beer replacement for like um, a mimosa, mimosa? It absolutely absolutely totally would it's just like this is almost like a strawberry mimosa yeah and and because I mean and and it's you're right because it's champagne it, it, there's no Real beer characteristic. Yeah, no ball, no hop. There's no, there's nothing like that in here. Yeah, the flavor isn't so overly sweet that it totally kills your taste buds, dude. No, it. and you get the taste. Although a I bit would of, not drink no. more than a couple of these because you will have a massive yeah. headache the next one. I mean, being low in low in alcohol, you probably can have like three or four and still be okay right. over a brunch or a nice breakfast. This would be a great breakfast beer. I would, I think uh, yeah, perfect I'm with you 100%. Beer. And perfect. great with fresh fruit. Yeah, it's very, it, it's refreshing. So what do you give it? I have a hard time rating a fruit beer because it's so outside of my normal range of knowledge of beer. But for compared to what we've had in the style, 
I'm gonna give it like 85 or 86, mid 80s, yeah. I'm gonna go high because it's, it's usability. I'm gonna go 90 on it, uh, only because of its usability with, with meals. It, it works out pretty you well. You know, that's fair, and I think I might be rating it low, and I think Johnny might be better. All right. So, Joe is his normal animated self. Now, see, we have we have Johnny's brother Vince over here too, and he's being nice and calm and standing there while Joe is doing this. <laughs> we get hand signals from behind uh, <laughs> behind there. Joe's good for for that stuff. So he's moving good for on. Distracting me, maybe uh, to one of our local breweries okay. here, the Flying Dog. Flying Dog is interesting. In 1995, it was started by a gentleman named Gene Moore, and. Um, Gene started the brewery virtually, online, in 1995, which is pretty early for the internet, but his entire, the entire point of it was to attract interest, uh, and specifically the interest of people that might carry his beer, um, and the interest of investors yeah. who might be interested in investing in it. Along with that, um, n now, the idea grew very quickly in popularity, uh, it moved um, the... the Investors came along very quickly. Yep. Joe's dancing. That's why Johnny's smiling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so investors came along quickly. Investors came along quick, quick, quickly, but they stayed with the online thing and the logo and flyers and t-shirts and all these things were designed by users of the website mm -hmm. and members of the community. So this is a very early community-based push of a product online that eventually moved into Cherry Hill and became a brewery. Yep. Um, that's basically all I have to... Oh, this is important. Uh, Gene Muller um, actually attended the Siebel Institute of Technology in Chicago. Now, if you're going to go to a school for brewing, that is the only school you go to. Not the only school, but it is the premier. It's the Harvard of, of brewing, the brewing schools in the United yeah, yeah. States. Um, and so he, he did attend that. So that's going to lend itself to just being a better beer to begin with. This is brewed with, and I'm sorry there's a lot of history on this. This is actually brewed with coffee from the Crescent Moon Coffee facility they make all organic coffees and they are actually in Malka Hill New Jersey now here's a great little tidbit if you try this beer and you like this beer and you like the coffee that's in it they are selling the coffee brew it's called hedonism and you can actually go on either Crescent Moon's website or on um, uh, Flying Fish's website and they will give you a link and you can buy the coffee online and just get the coffee by itself. Yeah, we'll have to make sure you'll probably, uh, we'll put links up uh, right under here and uh, make sure that we get something in there. Yeah. So Sorry, a lot of information, but let's give us a... Wow. So this high, is like... High, uh, high coffee uh, scent uh, yeah, from but this. I mean, immediately a bitter coffee uh, as well. I've already made my opinion on this one. I should let you know. I got this so Johnny could try it. Ooh, well, this would be interesting then. Yeah, uh... I like the coffee uh, aroma to it. Uh, lacing on the glass doesn't seem to be uh, staying that way. It doesn't have a huge amount of legs. Uh, this but is a porter. Yes, it is a porter. This is American style porter. Um, uh, so which, a, little, a little hop character to it. Um, as far as uh, ABV, we got an 8%. It comes in pretty high. You know, it's high for it's high. It's an imperial porter. Yeah. So let's uh, give it a taste. Now I love this for a couple of reasons. I love its imperialness. I love the fact that it's espresso and not coffee. It's an espresso porter. I can't, I don't know. It's an espresso style porter. Um, it, it's the organic nature of the coffee. I think the coffee is very well brewed, very well integrated. And um, and I like the fact that it's not a stout. We've tried a lot of coffee stouts, but I like the fact that it's yeah. a porter. I, um, I like it. I gotta say, the, the flavor profile in this is, is fantastic. The, the coffee flavor really comes through very nice and it hides the high alcohol content pretty well. You do feel the, the little bit of burn from the alcohol it's content. Got it's got a little bit of heat to it, uh, but it's not so much that it seems like, okay, if I have one more, I'm gonna be done with this. Um, I have to say, I think that uh, I'm, I really like this. I think the, the, the coffee, they did a fantastic job of integrating it into a porter and uh, it is a little dry. Uh, not a, not incredibly yep. not incredibly moist beer, a little dry, but but not too bad. I'd put this with, you know, I, I'd make uh, for fruit recommendations. I mean, I put it with a lot of cheeses, a lot of very smoky, uh, earthy cheeses, um, even you know Havarti's and and Brie's and things like that. I probably do very well. So, um, what do you give it? I, I hate to do this back to back. I'm giving it a ninety. I liked it that much. Me, I'm a ninety-one on this beer. Um, we actually tried a couple of coffee porters recently, and um, we were not as impressed as we had hoped to be, and when I tried Flying uh, Flying Fish's introduction, um, I actually felt good and I felt like, yeah, this is kind of what we had been looking for. Absolutely. I don't know how we managed to do the show 
with these clowns <laughs> yeah, behind the camera. Is they're, insane. I'm, they're you know killing what? us today. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my a straight face. You know what? Do a little wrap up. Do a little wrap up. Yeah. Just do a little wrap up here. Okay. So uh, as everybody knows, we covered uh, yeah, we've covered Philly Beer Week. Great conversation with Sam Caljoni from uh, from. Uh, f- uh, Dogfish Head uh, also got to sit down with uh, the Flying Dog Boys a couple of, of days, but um, you know we want to let you know we got more shows coming out uh, with those interviews and our coverage of Beer Week should be coming at you uh, within the next week. So for two guys on beer, I'm Johnny Bellata. This is the flip videoing Dave Martirana, and, and you will see. There's Vincent and there's Joe behind the camera. That's where we like to keep them. <laughs> Please go out and enjoy some beer. Absolutely, cheers. <laughs> Maniacs.